If you're still focusing your CO2 or your diode laser using a focus block or a kickstand that came with the laser, you are not getting the optimal focal distance for your specific laser. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom focus block specific to your laser so you can really get it dialed in. Here are the items you are going to need to make your focus block. You're going to need a scrap piece of wood that's about an inch and a quarter thick or 32 millimeters, something like that. The exact dimension doesn't matter. It just needs to have a little bit of thickness to it. You're going to need something to engrave on. I'm using this three millimeter thick 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of birch ply I got online. And I'm using this because it has a nice even grain powder on the top and engravings are easy to see on this. And that's the key thing. We need to have good visibility for the engravings. And then you'll need something to cut out your focus block from. I'm using this quarter inch thick plywood and this is not a good candidate for the engravings because of the grain pattern here. It'll make it really hard to see what we're about to do. And you'll understand why that's important in just a minute. You're going to need a scrap block of wood that's got some height to it. And I'm going to tape it down to, I just have this piece of MDF in here. I'm not cutting all the way through, but I wanted a nice flat surface for this. So I'm going to use some painter's tape that I have. Doesn't have to be super strong tape. Just want to make sure that the block's not going to move around too much on you, mainly in this direction. If it goes back and forth a little bit, that's fine, but we just don't want it moving this way and that way. And the reason is because we are going to take another piece of wood and we are going to lay it on top of our block to give it an angle. And this will become clear why we're doing this in just a minute. But we want to make sure that this doesn't move in this direction because that will affect the angle of the board. So I'm going to add a little bit more tape now so that this board isn't going to move because once we start, we cannot move this board until we are completely done. And then I'm going to bring my laser in here. I want it to be kind of just touching the edge of the board here, but slightly above it so that it doesn't touch when we engrave. Okay. I think that's going to clear just fine. And also you want at least about 10 inches or I don't know, 500 or so millimeters of room to do your engraving. And now we're going to jump over to light burn. In Lake Burn, I'm going to grab my pencil tool. I'm going to left click here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag over a line, left click again, right click to get rid of the extra line. And then I'm going to go back to my selection. I'm going to select the line and I want this line to be about 10 inches or 250, 254 millimeters. So I'm going to do 254. So I'm going to select my line and we're going to use the grid feature because I could just copy and paste these, but I want them sort of lined up and the grid will let me do that. So we're going to go with one, two, three, four, five. Two. We're going to reverse the direction so it's not running off the top. There we go. So I've got one, two, three, four, five lines. I think 30 millimeters should be good for the spacing. That should give me enough. I'm going to hit OK. I've got my five lines now. They're on the blue layer. So let's set up our cut and layer. This is just an engrave. It is not a cut setup line. Obviously, you'll need to set this up to your laser speed and power that works for you. And we should be all set. So let's go ahead and turn on the laser here. And I apologize because my audio is not going to sound great due to the fact that the jet engine that is the laser module puts off so much noise. Let's go ahead and get this lined up close to the edge. Not too close though. And we'll say that's good. Let's frame it. And you'll see as it moves away, the board is getting further away from the laser. So it's defocusing it. And then it's going to come into more focus. And then eventually it's going to be so close, it's going to be defocused again. So the idea is we're going to find somewhere on this board the spots where the laser is perfectly in focus. All right, let's flip on the extractor fan, close up, and we are gonna run this thing. All the ghosts. If you're new to laser engraving, I've got a couple of resources that will help you out. First, I have my laser learning diode edition course, which is all about how to get set up and running with the diode laser. So if you have just purchased or are planning to purchase a diode laser, be sure and check that out. Also, if you have no idea about what kind of laser you're going to get, I have a 35 page ebook talks all about the different kinds of lasers you can get, some price ranges and gives you the pros and cons for each. 
to help you decide if a laser is right for you and which kind. You can find all that information for both of those down in the description. So now on our board here, we have our five lines drawn. And if you look closely, you can see that they change in thickness and then eventually disappear as it goes way, way out of focus. And what we're going to do is we're going to find on each of these five lines the spot where it is the thinnest, and we're going to mark that. Now, you don't need any special equipment to be able to do this. The human eye is pretty good at seeing small distances. But if you want to get fancy, you could get like a USB microscope if you want to get super dialed in or, you know, a magnifying glass or whatever. I'm going to use just my regular glasses and I'm going to look and I'm going to identify on each line here where it is the thinnest. And this is just a little scrap piece of balsa wood or I'm just going to use it to draw a line just so I know where my point is. And then we're going to look at the other five and we're just going to do this for each of the five lines. They should be fairly close together like this. They shouldn't be like one way over here and one way over here. If so, something's gone wrong with your setup. Maybe your board's warped or something. We've got our lines. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the laser back on. We're going to put the spot right here and we're going to use that to do some measurement. So I'm going to fire my laser now and I'm going to, so I can see the spots and I'm going to use the light burns to put that spot right in the crosshair where the horizontal line meets the vertical line that I drew. And you could do this by hand, but I like to use light burns. I feel like I get a little bit better control. Next up, I'm going to take my calipers and you want a decent set of calipers for this. Cheaper calipers are okay, but they're not going to give you great precision. Now, unfortunately, the first one I made a little too close to the edge of the board and I couldn't get a reading on it. So we are going to do readings on the last four lines. And the reason I do five is because usually one line, in case one line is way out of whack or something, I can just ignore it. Now, the easiest way that I have found to do this is I take this piece of scrap here. It's got a straight edge on it. And then as soon as it starts to show the laser spot, I back it off just a little bit. And then I put my calipers right up against that. And that's pretty doggone close to dead center. We just take the reading alphas, which is a 4 3 in this case. And I'm going to put that in a notepad on the computer. And then you're just going to repeat the process for the remaining lines you have. So you have all five of your measurements recorded. Got my four measurements here. Now we're just going to take the average of them. So I'm just going to pop them in my calculator, divide that by four, and we get 8.5675. So I'm going to call that 8.57. That's going to be our dimensions for our custom focus block. Go back into light burn. We're going to get rid of these things here. I'm going to delete them. I'm going to draw a square. I've drawn my square. Now I'm going to click back onto select. I'm going to select said square. We're going to make it 8.57 tall because that's our focus. And then you want to make this the width. Uh, you want to make it larger than the width of your laser module so it's easy to, to hold on to. I'm going to make mine 85. And then I like to get fancy. So that I know what the heck it's, this is not just a scrap piece of wood laying around and I'm going to grab some text. I'm going to do B1 40 watt focus. That is way too big, which is fine. Let's make it fit back here. Select this and then we're going to vertical center, align horizontal center. There we go. Do you want to have this on a separate layer because I'm going to do a cut. So we're going to do black for the cut and then we'll leave blue for my engrave. Now you will need to go and set up your laser to whatever settings make sense for the material and the type of laser you have. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut out my focus block and then we'll see how it works. Once you've got your focus block cut out, it is important to actually measure it because chances are it's not exactly what it's supposed to be. So mine was supposed to be 8.57 and you can see it's come out 8.34. And if I measure in a couple spots, 833, 833, 834. So we're going to take that information and we are going to resize it in light burn so we can get the actual size we need. So we put in 8.57, which was the height for the block. However, it did not come out 8.57. It came out 8.33. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our calculator we're going to do 8.33 divided by 8.57. That gives us 0.97, which is basically means we're about 3% shy. So I'm going to say I need three more percent. So all I'm going to do is come in here to Lakeburn. I'm going to click on both of these. And you can 
You can just do the height or you can do the height and the width doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and lock it for consistency here. And I'm just going to go to the percent here and I'm going to go 103%. So now it's going to come out 8.827. We're going to cut this one out and we'll see how this one measures. And we've got our new focus block out of the laser. Let's give this one a measure. 8.58, 8.56, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.57, 8.57, 8.57. Close enough to 8.57 to me. So that we're going to call that good. So let's go take a look at how to use this. And now that you've got your custom focus block, super simple to use. We put it underneath of our laser, lower your laser module down till it's just touching, tighten the laser module back up, and then we remove our focus block. And there you go. Custom focus block specific for your laser.